Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Welcome to another episode of Arise. Thank you guys so much for coming back and joining me. Um, today was a little bit of a hard one for me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer, and then we will get started. Jesus, thank you so much for the gift of this day. Lord, I thank you for everyone who is watching from around the world, God. I thank you that you have brought them to this place right now. I pray that somebody hears a word from you, God. Lord, I just ask that you continue to do your sanctifying work in each of our lives, God, because we were created for your glory. Let us honor you. Let us praise you. Let us worship you, God. Let us, let us be your hands and feet. We thank you for this time together, and I just ask that you bless the fellowship that will happen today. In Jesus' name, amen. I say the fellowship, it's not like we're here conversing and praying with each other in the same room, but I can imagine you guys sitting there with your coffee or sitting on your couch or sitting with your kids or sitting with your husband and having your, your quiet time, whenever it is that you watch this. So I am having fellowship with you on the other side of the screen and I'm just thankful to have you guys here. So tomorrow is Halloween and there are many thoughts on if Christians should celebrate Halloween or not. And I am going to be real honest with you guys. When you are being transformed and sanctified every day into the image of Christ, you start to feel conviction about everything. So you'll remember last year when I was talking about Halloween, I said, you know, I believe that as Christians, we can redeem this day and we don't let our kids participate in the blood and the gore and the ghosts and the demon and all that side of Halloween, but we still let them dress up and go trick or treating and, and do all that fun stuff. And I've just been really feeling convicted about it this year to where even though we don't let them participate in all the bloody stuff and the scary stuff, you're still running around with other little kids who are dressed up in demon costumes or we're letting them go up to houses with, you know, big skeletons or witches or people hanging from trees. And it's just the sanctifying work of the Lord in my spirit that is making me feel uneasy about that now. And our kids are probably going to be very upset when we say that we probably are not going to go trick or treating this year. And I have a, a my, one of my best friends has a Halloween party every year and I always go and I'm just feeling convicted in the sense that if I don't want my kids to participate, how can I go and participate? Even though it's just fellowship and you know we have food and we hang out and there's a costume contest and it's so fun. It's hard when you're pulled away from the world because I don't want to become this legalistic Christian who people think I'm judging them. I'm not judging them. I am feeling personal conviction in my own heart about what God is doing to me and is sanctifying me in my walk with Him. So it's very personal. Scripture tells us in Ephesians 5.11, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. First Thessalonians 5.19 says, do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. And that is what is happening to me. God is sanctifying me and God is convicting me at every turn. And, and that's, what, that's what we want, right? We wanna be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. We wanna be changed. We wanna be transformed into the image of God. And I have friends on every end of the spectrum. I have friends who do all the gory, bloody stuff. I have friends who are in the center, like I used to be and am changing now, where they let their kids go and trick or treat and have fellowship and get together and go on hay rides. And then I have other friends who don't participate at all. And I'm still gonna be friends with everybody. I'm not gonna like not be friends with my friends who celebrate Halloween or it's just, I'm feeling myself pulled more away, being set apart, not in a way that I'm higher, but set apart from the world and dying to my, dying to my flesh and not doing things that I used to enjoy and not, not um, gratifying my, my sinful desires. So I encourage you 
to listen to your own conviction about this. This this is what God is saying to you in your life and, and what you are feeling by the Spirit for you and your family. Like I said, I know our kids are probably gonna be upset because London is a squishmallow. I mean, there's nothing demonic about that. And Lincoln was gonna be the uh, guy from Free Guy. So he's dressed up in like a little suit. So there's nothing demonic about those things. And and I, I don't want to quote, ruin my kid's childhood or take them away from things that are fun, but I wanna instill in them biblical values about what scripture says and what we should be doing and honoring um, to Christ. So being, like I said, being being separated and being sanctified is difficult. It's, it hurts because our sinful flesh wants nothing more than to say, well, this is okay. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. You're not doing anything bad. You know, you're not participating in things like that, but it's tricky. It's tricky and it's something that you have to listen to the Holy Spirit move in your, in your life and in your heart. And that is what is happening. He's sanctifying me in a way um, through and through. So it's changing everything about me. We wanna be God honoring and God fearing and we wanna listen. We wanna have eyes to see and ears to hear as to what the Lord is saying. I, we're also feeling kind of conviction about Christmas and other holidays and other traditions, Easter and we, I won't go into too much detail here because I don't know who's listening and what age you are, um, but we, we've had the talk with our kiddos about Santa and other figures, and um, you can assess what I mean by that. So this brings me kind of to my topic today. Are we living as a living sacrifice to God? In Romans 12, one and two, it says, I appeal to you therefore brothers by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. First Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God. This is something I wish I would have known when I was younger. You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. We are not our own. We were bought by the precious blood of Jesus, and it is no longer we who live as Christians. It is Christ who lives in us. So we are to honor Him with our bodies as a living sacrifice. We are to have a die to self mentality. And obviously that, that um, saying is not in scripture, but we are to basically die to ourselves, to our fleshly wants, our fleshly desires. It means we turn away from the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, um, the pride of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. They used to bring goats and sheep and rams and, and all kinds of animals to sacrifice for God as an atonement for sin. But by the grace of God, Jesus was our once for all final sacrifice. And he paid for us. He took the wrath of God by his blood. He lives inside of all of us. And so we are to honor his life and his work and his death on the cross and his resurrection in our living bodies. So it says to present your bodies living, holy, and acceptable to God what we do with our hands, what we do with our feet, what we do with our lips, what we say with our lips, what we do with our tongue, what we allow to enter into our ears or to our eyes, what we watch, it's worship to God. So is what we are doing honoring, holy and acceptable to God, if we think about that. He wants all of us. Sometimes at church, you know, you can hear, do you accept Jesus into your heart? Um, do you accept to make him Lord over your life? Well, he's already Lord. So he doesn't just want our heart. He wants all of us, everything. He wants our mind. He wants our body. He wants our soul, our spirit, because it's his. God created you in your mother's womb, your heart, your mind, your body, just the perfect way that it is for him and for his glory. So do we love each other? Do we honor each other with our lips? Do we serve each other? Do we count others as more important than ourselves? Or are we self-seeking? Are we self-serving? I think myself included at times. I, you know, a lot of times we're selfish. We want what we want. We want to feel comfortable. We want to do what we want to do because it makes us happy. We want our needs met. We want to feel comfort. We want to feel appreciation. But we need to live with a posture of living others-centered. 
Romans 6, 13 says, Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments of righteousness. Is what we do with our body, with our mind, with our lips, is it pleasing to God? Philippians 1, 20, Paul says his hope, in verse 20 says, As it is my eager expectation and hope, that I will not be ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or death. Do my body, my actions, show that I value Jesus more than anything? Does what I do and what I say and what I watch and what I listen to and, and how I act, does that show that I value Jesus more than anything in this world? I know that I have work to do. I am not perfect. I know that everything that I do does not honor Jesus, but I'm thankful that the Lord is sanctifying me every single day. And it doesn't feel good a lot of the times to face certain things in your life that you're doing that are not honoring to God. It doesn't feel good to be convicted about those things. But my hope is that each day, the things of this world will be stripped from me so that when people see me and see my life, they see somebody that is transformed. They see somebody that is living for Jesus, that his light shines out of me, that when they look back on who I used to be, they see who I am now and I am radically different. <laughs> Thanks be to God. And my prayer is the same for you. My prayer is that you draw near to Jesus, that He changes your heart, that He convicts you at every turn, and that you listen. And that you, you pray about what it is that He is speaking to you or what it is that you're reading in the Word. You pray, Lord, search my heart. Remove from me anything of this world that does not honor you. We can't just talk the talk. I can't come on here on a rise and talk to you about my faith and my love for Jesus and go out and live of the world. I have to walk the walk. I have to walk the walk for myself. I have to walk the walk for you guys. I have to walk the walk for my children because they're watching and people are watching and you might be the only piece of Jesus that people see. So is what you're doing honoring that? I would love to hear your comments on this. Becoming a follower of Jesus has truly changed my entire life. And I know that I've changed a lot, even just in these 133 episodes of Arise, I know that I used to say things that now I feel different about. But I'm thankful that that just shows God's redeeming work in my life and my heart and how He does change us and transforms us and molds us into who He has created us to be. We aren't supposed to be the same as when He found us. And even as Christians, when we do become followers, we're still not supposed to be the same as when He transformed our heart. We're supposed to be growing and maturing in our walk with Him as we go deeper every single day. I challenge you to do this this week. Go deeper with Him. Listen to what He is speaking to you. Don't count it off. Don't justify things. Really go deep with the Lord and say, God, search my heart. Show me what I need to change because I want to be more like your son. And I thank you for your sacrifice that you gave for me. I appreciate you guys. I love you. You are chosen. Comment below what your feelings are. I know we all have different feelings about this. Be nice to each other in the comments. Um, what you're feeling in your sanctification may not be the same place that somebody else is. So we are supposed to be salt and light, and I pray that we can do that for each other. I'll see you next time. You're chosen. Have a great week. Bye.